Hi, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Amanda Desocito, and I'm the CEO of My Mountain Mover. And today on the episode of the Pinnacle podcast, we have a very special guest, Rebecca Ketchum with us. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Nice to see you. And for anyone listening, Rebecca, she is our marketing manager for My Mountain Mover. And she also happens to be my sister as well. So today is going to be <laughs> awesome. We are going to discuss different marketing strategies, what we personally do for MMM. We're going to let you in on a few uh, key secrets, secrets for us. And um, we're also going to talk about social media platforms and how to increase your engagement on them. So Becca, give us a little introduction to yourself and um, yes. we'll go from there. Yeah, um, I have a major in marketing, um, so I always knew I wanted to go into business. Um, we grew up, I'd say, in a very business-centric household. We were always learning about finance and um, just had that business-oriented mindset, and I knew I wanted to go into marketing because I love the creativity of it, and I love the challenge of um, trying to figure out what's going to stick with people and what's going to make people flip that switch and say, oh, I want that. I want that product. I want that service. And um, so all throughout college, I did marketing internships, social media internships. Um, I got to try my hand at digital marketing and learned a lot about SEO and Facebook ads and all that. And my role now, um, I'm loving because it's such a mix of everything. I get to do the creative side. I get to do um, you know, more of the data driven side. So um, I've really just been loving um, working with my mountain mover and getting to kind of learn as we go. What are the perks of being a startup business? Mm -hmm, exactly. And social media sometimes gets a bad rap because of just how confusing it can be and how it's constantly shifting. And a lot of um, established traditional businesses do not utilize social media, right? So right. that's what we're here to talk about today is how do we increase our engagement, but also our conversions through social mm -hmm. media platforms and traditional right. marketing, right? Because you have these two kind of um, not competing, but just different environments and how to do marketing, right? You have your traditional marketing which is slowly fading, right? It's still effective, but not, not as effective as digital marketing for sure. And then yeah. in digital marketing, right? You have different subsections of that di digital marketing and kind of where you are really focusing on for us is in that social media marketing. Um, yeah. So I want to just kind of, let's expand on that. Um, you are running, tell us kind of a little bit about um, what platforms MMM is using and okay. explain our strategy um, a little bit on each platform and then how those kind of tie into where MMM is heading. So right now, MMM is on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We have a podcast. We're also on LinkedIn. So those are our main social media channels. And when it comes to Instagram, uh, Instagram, like most of the social media channels, it's highly visual. And Instagram, I would argue, is the best social media platform for shareable content. Instagram is mm. where you're going to want to foster your community. You're going to have the best engagement, I'd say, with your followers. Instagram makes it super easy to engage. Um, because we are a, a B2B um, business service, it is harder to um, foster conversions on Instagram, right? So our mm. strategy for Instagram is more brand awareness. Um, mm. We are posting shareable content, content that is super relevant to the business owners that we are trying to target. Um, we are, you know, posting about our virtual assistants and what they can do, but we're also doing productivity guides and business tools and really trying to think what is the most relevant content that someone scrolling on Instagram who's a business owner would see, share, save, comment on, um, you yep. know, send to their other friends. So that's our Instagram strategy. Um, when it comes to Facebook, I think Facebook's kind of our hard hitter. Facebook is where we're running Facebook ads. Um, we are really 
super specifically targeting our audiences on there. So we know exactly who we want to target. Um, that is definitely, I think, where we're seeing the most conversions. And that's less brand awareness and more, hey, this is what we do. This is why you need us. And here's how we can get connected and get you set up with a VA. Mm-hmm. And then um, LinkedIn, we also are running ads on LinkedIn. So it's similar to Facebook. Um, I think people who use LinkedIn are looking more for that, you know, business community and less to be advertised to, but it is a great way to get in contact with doctors and, you know, um, just another way to reach our audience. And then Pinterest is actually something that we just started about a month ago. Um, And Pinterest is kind of our secret little weapon, you know, it is crazy how many people are on Pinterest and willing to shop and buy and discover new things. Um, So we've been creating content on Pinterest as well, and it's been doing super well. So it's been exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. And Pinterest was new to me when you kind of had brought that up that we should try it. Um, I was definitely taken aback a little bit because you're right. It's not where you would think to find our current clients, right? Totally. I think of Pinterest as kind of this mom scrapbook board place where you go to pin wedding dresses and household items and things for your baby or your children, right? But right, it, yeah. it, it is really driving a ton of traffic to our site, which is really fascinating to me. So um, I wanted to kind of back up a little bit and talk about our target audience, because me yeah. and you, we spend a lot of time thinking about that. And I think that is one area where um, we have an advantage is because we know our audience well. And if I could yeah. recommend to any business out there, take the time to know who your audience is. What yeah. are they looking for, right? What is going to speak to them? Are mm-hmm. they more of the Gen Z Um, generation that you're targeting or is it older people in their 50s and because based on that population that you're targeting their needs are going to be different right so for us we are marketing our virtual assistants right primarily in the healthcare real estate and business industries and in each of those industries their audience is going to be slightly different and their needs are going to be slightly different right so we have Mm -hmm. to really figure out How do we tailor our ads or our marketing to engage? Like you said, that is the biggest thing that we want. It's not about the likes. It's not about the number of followers that we have. It's about the engagement. And at the end of the day, the client conversions, right? We need to increase our ROI. We're spending X amount on advertising or marketing, right? What's our return on that on the client side? And we have seen a tremendous amount of return on our marketing so far, um, even though our likes or our comments might be relatively low in our industry, right? So ex- okay. expand on that idea a little bit. When you were setting this up and you're doing all of your content, what are you thinking about when it comes to that target audience? Right, so I think when it comes to my marketing, it really is gonna vary industry by industry um, because the industries that we're targeting are so different Um, I really have to get specific when I'm creating my content. So I know that if I am trying to reach someone in the medical field, they are busy, busy, busy. They can see right through the fluff of marketing, right? They don't like Mm. being marketed to because doctors are probably some of the most sought after people when it comes to products, services, medical devices. They are just getting slammed. So Mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about marketing to the medical industry, I'm thinking right away of, I need to show them within the first two seconds that they see one of my ads, how does this bring value to them, right? Mm -hmm. They need to see Mm -hmm. the value of it right up front. It needs to be the first thing they notice. Um, It has to be realistic and relevant to their life. And that's something that has been a challenge for me to learn is learning more about the medical industry in general, knowing which softwares they use, knowing exactly which tasks they need help with the most, and then bringing in our VA roles and saying, look here, we have a VA that matches precisely what you need. Um, And just kind of cutting through the fluff, right? So for medical, it's just all about 
being very just straight to the point. And so I think that's mm. kind of my strategy and knowing that audience. And then for real estate and business, <clears throat> I'd say it's a little, you know, it's a little flashier. You don't have to be as straight to the point because they, I think they do appreciate, you know, the aesthetic ads and they like mm -hmm. the Instagram and they like the cute graphics. And so um, I learned that, but at the end of the day too, they do appreciate some of our best posts on social media have been, here are the best business tools for your, you know, for your marketing, for your accounting. Those always get sent around a lot. They get a ton of saves. So I think at the end of the day, it really just is about figuring out what is going to bring value to your target audience. And then also seeing what does well. That's why it's so important. We track every single month. We look at our social media pages and we look at what performed well, what didn't, and then adjusting month to month so that if you know a post did really well, you bet I'm going to make that a series and that's going to be a weekly series. And mm -hmm. that's something that I've done that we've still, I've seen a lot of growth that way. So really knowing um, your audience, knowing what's going to bring them value and adjusting month to month, I say are my biggest mm -hmm. tips. I love that. That is so true. I was in um, a meeting the other day and one of our key speakers is talking about sales and marketing and how in this world, people are extremely smart. They can see mm -hmm. through your advertising almost instantaneously, right? So yeah. it has made marketing so, so <laughs> hard so confusing for a lot of businesses because yeah. um, it, it's just they're smart and they can see right through like if you are not legit they will see that and yeah. so we even on our sales side of things and our marketing right we try very hard to make sure it's relevant and I know everyone hears that in the industry right make sure you have relevant content but like what does that mean what does that look like and we yeah. have taken the time to not only expand on what we think is important for people to know but to get feedback from our actual clients right, right. and the yeah. people who are actually going on our Instagram what are you liking about our Instagram what are our clients looking for right mm -hmm. when they're coming to us what is the most common question that they have that maybe we can answer on social mm -hmm. media even before they come to us right so they're their yeah. knowledge is just a little bit better, right? And it it expedites the process so much faster once they kind of get on that path because they understand like, okay, MMM's not messing around. They really want to provide value for us from the very moment that they find us on social media or on Google, right? To mm -hmm. the onboarding of the virtual assistant and going forward, totally. right? So um, that's something I am really proud of is we are very relevant and we know our audience and we know that our audience is going to like the content that we're putting out. Mm -hmm. So let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Instagram. So dive into a little bit more of your tips and tricks for Instagram. Right. So Instagram is notorious for changing up their algorithm all the time. You never know. Um, you know, what's going to take off. It's, it's very confusing. And a lot of business owners are intimidated by it. And, you know, they might just throw in the towel and be like, I can't figure it out. It's worthless. I'm not going to use it. But I would really encourage people, if you are serious about um, your company, Instagram is pretty much essential, right? You have access to millions and billions of people on Instagram who can see your brand. You need to utilize it. Um, so I would say kind of just embracing Instagram's latest features, right? Kind of you have to roll with the punches on Instagram. You can't stay stuck in a strategy. You have to adapt and evolve your Instagram page in order to see growth. Um, so right now, you know, the big things are reels. We do reels, which have done super well. Um, they're great little videos and just that's a new trend. Um, live streams, stories, Instagram TV. Also, um, I'd say knowing your metrics super well on Instagram. And again, this does take time. It takes research. Um, but if you understand what Instagram values and what they see as successful, then you are going to experience so much growth. So for instance, a lot of people are stuck in the notion of 
that likes are the best thing you can get on Instagram, right? So if a post doesn't have a lot of likes, then, oh, it didn't do that well. But actually, Instagram is transitioning into saves and sends. Those are now the most important metrics for a post. So honestly, when I look at my posts to see how they're doing, I measure how well they did based on how many people saved that post. And again, that goes back to providing value and they're only going to save it if they want to remember it. And if there's something Mm. in that post that's valuable to them. So Mm -hmm. that's been something that's been great for me to remember um, when it comes to providing value, because the save button, that's going to show you exactly how many people valued your post. So Mm. I think that's a good tip for Instagram. Um, I think just being consistent too and being authentic. Again, like you said, Our society is so inundated with marketing 24 seven. We are saturated. We get hundreds of ads a day and I can see through them. You can see through them. Everyone can see when it's a good quality company and when Mm -hmm. they're being authentic. And I think that that's Mm -hmm. just something to remember too, is it can be so easy to view social media as traditional marketing and you, you can get kind of cold or robotic or too professional, but I think people love seeing, you know, the behind the scenes of your brand and they like to get Mm -hmm. a glimpse into the people behind it. And, you know, what your, what your purpose is as a company and just staying human and showing your human side. I think that's another super important part of social media in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I think hashtags are still super relevant for Instagram. So if you can do, there's tons of tools online, like hashtag generators and research that you can look at and get some super relevant hashtags to further target your audience. Um, And then I'd say, again, just consistency. If you are posting, you know, you don't have to post every single day, but try to post three to four times a week. Try to keep up with your comments and reach out to people and just really engage and be social because at the end of the day, that's what these platforms are about is community and um, being social. So I think that those are some tips for Instagram. Yeah, that is great. That is literally what I was going to capitalize on what you just said was being real and not being afraid to branch out. It's so funny to me, like the posts that we think are going to do really well versus the posts that, okay, you know, maybe this is relevant, but it's not the primary message that we're trying to get across those are often the times the posts that do the best. It's so weird, you yeah. know, like yeah. I would just recommend to any businesses that are listening, um, take advantage of branching out. Don't be afraid to maybe add content that you n- maybe normally wouldn't talk about, you know, like for example, yeah. with us, we um, are a virtual assistant company, right? That is our main spiel that of course we will always talk about. But what comes along with that is because they're virtual, they work from home, right? So what are some self-care tips that we can give out, right? For Mm -hmm. all the people who are working from home during COVID. That post did extremely well for us because there was a need, right? People are at home. It's new for them. They're not really sure how to work in this environment right now. Everything's virtual. They're having to adapt and they need self-care tips, right? That was a perfect example of a post that brought us in business, but was also something that wasn't exactly tied to our virtual assistant marketing spiel that we normally say. So right. we and learned- Yeah, I think also that I just thought of another tip and something that I like to do is If you have a post like that, that is super successful, utilize it, repurpose it, do more with it, expand on it. Like I knew that that post did well. So I made a blog post out of it. And that way you can kind of recycle your content and give people more of what you already know that they like. So Mm. if you're feeling stuck and you can't really, you know, you're in a rut, you're like, I don't know what else to post, go back, see what you did well and do more of that. Mm. That's great. That's great. Same thing too, when we do the reels, they love it because people Mm -hmm. are, they love to kind of peek behind the curtain and see what's going on, right? That's why we're doing this podcast. We are revealing MMM right now in our marketing, which a lot of businesses Mm -hmm. would not do, right? Because I, but I think it's important to be real and to help other businesses out, right? We're all in Mm -hmm. this together. And as if we can share what we've learned along the way, then 
were better for it, you know? So it's been really exciting to see Instagram kind of take off um, in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about Facebook? What's our strategy on Facebook? What are some tips that you would recommend? Right. So Facebook is definitely a beast. It is not super easy to manage. Um, Unfortunately, they don't make it super easy to run ads on Facebook. It's just, it can be very confusing. And again, like Instagram, always changing. So some quick tips for Facebook. I would say, first things first, optimize your page. Make sure that your page is perfect. Have all your information all your links, make sure you have high quality content to post. And you wanna make sure your page is fully optimized. You want all the information to be super easy to find, all your links are working. And that's just something super simple that a lot of businesses don't do. And it really does make a difference. If you go onto their Facebook page and it just looks professional, it looks clean and it looks well done, that alone could be the difference between a client clicking on your link or not. So I think that that is a super huge element of Facebook. Um, I'd say, again, optimize your content. Facebook, like any other social media platform, is going to be visual. So you want to use high quality, engaging images because your photos are going to showcase your brand and therefore your brand personality. So when we're making Facebook ads, um, we want to make sure that we have the best photos possible, the ones that we know are going to be visually appealing. Um, And then also a rule I like to follow for Instagram Facebook content is the 70-20-10 rule. So this rule says that you should post around 70% your original content, right? And then 20%, you can do more of your followers' interests, such as other blog articles and just kind of industry information. And then keep your straight self-promotional content to only 10%. And I think when it's when Facebook, you can be creative when it comes to, obviously your advertising is going to be self-promotion, but it comes to, when it comes to the content, um, again, people can see right through it and they get tired of it. If it's just straight buy our, buy our product, you know, hire our services. So I think with Facebook, um, that's just a little helpful ratio to follow if you're feeling confused about what to post. Mm. Um, And then I think, again, for our Facebook ads, it's all goes back to keeping it simple and providing that value straight away. Uh, We work together on creating descriptions and headlines for Facebook ads and the primary text. And, you know, we just go through the process of revising them again and again and being like, is this going to show them the value of our service right away. And I think that Mm. just keeping it straightforward and not getting caught up in, you know, trying to find the most eloquent eloquent way to put something or the perfect wording or long paragraphs. um, I think just keeping it simple on Facebook always does well. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I loved how you mentioned um, the fact of, you don't have to make it eloquent or perfect, right? And people, Mm -hmm. like we've nailed down, people are real, right? And you have to think of uh, like yourself as a consumer, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times when you're immersed so deeply into your business, it becomes very difficult. You're because you're like, I just did this amazing post. Like, why is no (laughs) one responding to it? You know, like I would have loved to see this on my feed. You know, yeah. but you have but to. But it's get our baby. The... Of course, we think that. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard it's... to put yourself in a consumer's wine- mindset, and that's why it's good to call in those outside perspectives and be like, "Hey, if you saw this ad, what would you think? You know, how can we improve?" Because we get so focused in on what we're doing that it can be so easy for us to miss little mistakes or, you know, obvious ways to make it better. Mm-hmm. Exactly exactly my point you might think that this is the best thing in the world and it might totally fall flat but that leads me to my next point I was thinking when you were talking was um, to not be afraid of optimization because Mm -hmm. it is such a rapidly changing way to market especially Mm -hmm. if you're b2b right b2c is completely different I would say it's easier than b2b 
because yeah. there's just more um, interaction and engagement naturally with the consumer versus another business. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has challenged us. It has really made us yeah. optimized and to not be scared of that, you know, um, we are not, we do not have a high powered marketing team of 50 people, <laughs> you know, we right. have a relatively small marketing department, but we are working every day to make sure that we are optimizing our ads and providing content. And that does not happen overnight. And I would encourage any business owners who are listening, if you don't have a full-fledged marketing team, don't be discouraged. Just start small, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Start with something that you're proud of because that is what's going to show. If you're passionate about what you do and you're proud of the service that you provide, people will be attracted to that. And I know, especially with MMM, that has been the feedback. Like we, Our staff is so passionate about that businesses really need this service that people mm-hmm. are attracted to that. And they, they're like, okay, yeah. you know what? We trust you. You guys are a trustworthy company. You're putting your best foot forward. Your VAs are super high quality, right? Well, we're going to give this a shot, you know? And we have seen that optimization is not something that we should run away from. Um, and bus- business owners need to take advantage of that. Even just t- recording on your iPhone, you know, just a little like, mm-hmm. hey, my name's Amanda. I'm the CEO of my mountain mover. I'm going to take you on a journey today of what my day-to-day looks like, right? Just to give you an inside scoop. It could be as simple, something like that. And I guarantee people would love to see something like that. Totally. And I think another tip for any, you know, small business owners who may be overwhelmed by social media marketing, really lean into the analytics. Every single social media platform will give you analytics. And I know people shy away because it may seem so confusing and overwhelming, but those truly will tell you exactly what you need to know about your marketing. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. You know, Mm -hmm. you impressions don't lie. All of that stuff that you need to know is right there. And if you just take the time to really study it and understand what it means, I guarantee you will see growth with your social media marketing. if you truly can understand, interpret, and then apply the metrics that Mm. they give you. Yep. Love that. Love that. Good. Okay. So we got Instagram down. We got Facebook. (laughs) What are your best tips um, in terms of Pinterest? Right. So Pinterest is kind of the newest one for me, for sure. Um, And Pinterest, again, it's like that little secret weapon. Not many people associate Pinterest with business or marketing. Um, But Pinterest is actually the fourth most popular social media platform in the US. Um, Even Twitter and Snapchat are not as popular as Pinterest. And something unique about Pinterest is that people are going onto Pinterest solely to look for inspiration. And they are actually the most open to buying um, out of any social media platform, which makes Mm. sense because on Instagram, you know, you may be just going on to look at your friends and family's photos, but for Insta- for Pinterest, you are actively looking for, you know, basically like lifestyle changes. Like if I'm going to mm. look for a recipe, I'm going to look for an outfit. Maybe I'm going to look for interior design tips. So I think that you can really drive traffic to your site um, by providing that relevant content. So for instance, what I like to do on Pinterest is We have a blog. And so right in Canva, Canva is amazing, by the way, any small business owners who are looking to level up their marketing, get on Canva, start making some pins. It is so easy. You can do a little cover, um, just link it back to your blog post. And that is one of the easiest ways to get a click to your website is through Pinterest. And so I like to do, again, I like to do a wide variety of stuff on Pinterest. So I'll do business resources. I'll also do branding tips. Most of it is mainly business, but I do throw in some lifestyle content just to make the page more well-rounded and to generate that traffic to our page. Um, But yeah, there, you know, there's a huge market for business um, owners on Pinterest because there, you know, so many companies um, are offering business hacks and tips through Pinterest. So there is a market on Pinterest, whether, Mm. you know, people know it or not, but there are people looking 
um, for what you sell on Pinterest. Mm, that is fascinating to me. I love your point about the um, engaged buyer. They have something like that on Facebook advertising as well, where you can target mm-hmm. um, a specific audience that is categorized as an engaged buyer. And mm-hmm. you're right. I've never thought about that on Pinterest too. Um, th- those are actively engaged shoppers or engaged buyers, right? Yeah. So that is a very fascinating um, tip for businesses. And we're seeing success even B2B as well, um, which is surprising to me, but it is just, you know, understanding those trends and those analytic analytics and using them to increase our traffic to, our, to the site. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. Becca, for coming Thanks on for our podcast. Me. Um, I hope that it was helpful to business owners out there. And just to kind of wrap it up, what would be your quick tips and strategies? If you could sum up what we've talked about today, what would you recommend business owners start with? Right. So I have a few quick tips. I'd say first, clarify your vision. Know who you are, what your vision is, what your mission is as a company. That needs to be number one. You have to know that inside and out. And then define your niche, right? So I think about who this is, again, your target audience. You have to understand that because if you do not have targeted relevant marketing, you're not, you can't reach, you know, who you want to reach. You can't target the entire population and see success. So know your audience. Um, My next one is level up your branding, right? We live in a highly visual society. Um, Aesthetic is it plays a huge role in business nowadays, thanks to social Mm. media and, you know, TV and everything that we have. So make sure that your branding is up to par and because that's the first impression that people are going to get of your business. And it does matter. Um, Create shareable content. Social media is all about sharing posts, right? So think about what is going to be, you know, what's something that could go viral? Not that going viral is your end all be all, Um, but think about shareable content, what's going to make people engage, right? Next, post consistently. Um, This is another huge one. It may take time to see results on social media, but you have to be patient, be consistent, and just stick with it for a little while to see um, some growth in your social media pages. And then my last one is just get social. You know, at the end of the day, um, social media is for interacting and reply to your comments, get conversations started, network, meet new people. All of that is um, going to help with your marketing and overall brand awareness. So those are my quick tips. (laughs) Awesome. That is awesome. I have one more that I was thinking of that I want to share too. Um, When it comes to social media marketing, we have found, like we've been saying all along on this podcast, right? is realness is extremely important to people. So what does that mean? And how do we, basically we need to um, gain their trust in order for them to even want to use our service, especially B2B, right? And what is Mm -hmm. the best way of doing that? Client testimonials, right? Mm -hmm. Getting your clients who are happy with your service or happy with the product that you're selling, get them on your social media, right? We have- we cannot even drill into people's brains that point, which I know we really haven't discussed much of it, but that has been huge for us because like we have shared, people are skeptical from the start and they need to feel like they can trust you. Our society is so built on trust, right? And Mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time um, thinking about that too. Like if we could have a client testimonial, or even just have someone as a reference for someone to call, you know, and just explain how our service has really helped them. Um, that has been huge as well. So totally. I just want to throw that in there before we yes. um, end the podcast. But I yeah. so appreciate you coming on today. <laughs> it has been of course. incredible. And I hope um, for everyone out there listening that this has been beneficial for you and that you'll take some of these tips that we have talked about today and really just try to revamp your marketing and your social media and to not be afraid, right, of increasing your engagement and being relevant in your industry. So thank you so much again, Becca, and everyone have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next episode.